Hey, this is Brandon with Counter Up. I want to quickly go over what we learned in this blog. Uh, this blog is about spinal curves, and I want to, uh, in video format, give you my opinions on uh, the beliefs and the research that I saw uh, while going through and finding the information and presenting it in this format. And uh, I think the main premise is do spinal curves matter? And spinal curves. In this blog, what we're looking at are normal spinal curves, uh, lordosis and kyphosis. And, and specifically, when we're looking at this blog, more spinal lordosis when it has uh, in relation to the cervical spine. And as it turns out, everybody does have different amounts of curves. And uh, those curves do matter. When you do have a curve in your spine, it's there to dissipate force. So there's no question that different people are going to be able to dissipate forces differently with uh, the amount of curve they have. What's normal though? What should we be striving for? I don't believe there's an answer. And it's not that I don't believe there's an answer, it's just the research doesn't show there's an answer. And we can look at, I saw this patient with this problem or this condition presented with this kind of spinal curve. Um, however, those are merely opinions. And if we had to look at the actual facts and we look at randomized control studies that are done in an ethical format, um, they don't see those patterns. So I think that the first thing is, is there a correlation between spinal curves and pain? Uh, the answer would be no uh, when you look at the research. Now, what I see in practice, and I'm sure what you see in practice, is people come in in some pretty crazy uh, presentations. They're bent to the side, they're bent forward, they're sweating, they're in pain. Those are pain responses. And when we have a, a situation uh, where there's a disc problem, if you looked at more of a McKenzie model, dynamic disc model, or you look at any kind of our chiropractic education, you'll see antalgias as related to disc problems or, or pains or, or orthopedic conditions. And in that situation, that is a functional deficit. That is something that um, is a, a variable associated with their pain. But when you look at the research, you can't tell one person that because of their curve, that's going to either cause pain or be the cause of future pain. And I think that I, I brought that up in this blog because of that, is because your words matter. Uh, if I told a patient because of his or her spinal curve, they're gonna have pain for the rest of their life, that's a huge tattoo on that person's forehead that's gonna tell that person that if they have back pain, it's because of their spinal curve, and that's not true. So I think we need to be very careful on how we relate acute pain and the acute pain presentation and how we translate that to the long-term prognosis of their care. So do the, does the, the intelligent matter? Does the, uh, the extension or flexion bias of that, that presentation matter? Yes. Um, however, as far as long-term prognosis, uh, we don't see as much research uh, support that. Now, when it comes to the second question, you know, can treatment affect spinal curves? There is some research to support that. Um, I, I will say the research is all from one group um, that I've seen, and, and if I'm proven wrong, if they have more resources, you know, let me have it. Um, I want to see it. Um, but when, when I look at research, I try, I try to remain unbiased when I look in different publications and different authors, and um, a lot of that research is from, from the, the same group who also has a proprietary method to alleviate those symptoms. So um, I do look at that. Um, however, uh, I don't see too much research above and beyond that about restoring curves and its relation to degeneration, uh, function, or pain. Um, so it's out there, but it is a, a little bit biased. Uh, so do spinal curves matter? Um, in, in the respect of the research, when you look at uh, acute pain, the, the answer would probably be no. In fact, the research that I showed in this blog uh, tells us that more people uh, have issues with curves in, in the, uh, the, uh, uh, the chronic setting as compared to the acute setting, meaning after whiplash, um, you're more likely to, to not have a curve. Um, so I think that we need to take a full body approach at what we look at. And if you see a deficit as far as an abnormal curve, go about uh, correcting that with uh, manipulation, mobilization, or, or any kind of other techniques. But we can't say one-to-one -one that that's going to be a problem later on. Uh, so what are the problems that we can focus on? We can focus on musculoskeletal problems. We can focus on metabolic problems. We can focus on psychological problems. And we should be focusing on all those three things with all of our patients. And uh, sometimes uh, that has to do with posture, it has to do with spinal curves. Uh, people feel more confident when they stand up straight. Uh, people feel more confident when they don't have pain. Um, so making sure you attach all those, uh, those different variables to every single patient can go a long way. Uh, don't just treat one passive thing. 
if your focus is on restoring curves, uh, I think you're going to have a, a limited exposure to our, our profession. If your uh, true passion is just correcting uh, subluxations or just fixing pain, while that's very admirable, um, if you want to get people out of pain and keep them happy and be a, 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 a problem solver in your community, you have to be attacking all those three things. And, uh, and if it's not you, that's fine. Um, I don't work on people's nutrition. Um, I, I would rather change your religion uh, than change your diet. It, it's, it's, it's impossible. But find another Cairo in your area. Uh, find a psycholo uh, psychologist, uh, psychologist in your area uh, that can do that kind of work. And when you can all work together towards the common goal of getting somebody out of pain or, or problem and lead them down the path of life, uh, that's when they become a promoter, promoter in your practice. There was a, a great, uh, in our meeting today, someone was talking about uh, one of our subscribers took his clinical results and uh, took the you know, what percent better after 30 days. Uh, he was seeing his patients for all the, the different diagnoses and he put it on his Facebook page and he got over 13 comments and uh, many shares and, and just hundreds of likes about um, you know showing people what he can do in his microsystem of, of his, his practice. And when we can start to affect people's lives in the long run and get great results, then hopefully we can build a practice that, that, and provide a product that people want to buy instead of one that you're constantly looking to sell with whatever uh, you know, system that you may have. Thanks.